So I had to take that picture because um, at that last show that uh, Charles, we had produced with Charles that, that Brian played, he and his girlfriend Lena became engaged. They would have never met if it wasn't for Charles. So uh, Lena is watching from home right now. She actually works for me. She's one of my favorite number one human being. And um, can you give a big congratulations, please, to Brian and Lena? Charles was the glue, bro. And he's gonna continue to be the glue. And that's it, bro. Facts. So, um, unlike Kaya, I like to be a little prepared. I'm not a very good riffer. But, um, just between me and Charles, uh, he was actually in my life before I even knew it. I've been a concert promoter for about 20 years. And, um, apparently, Charles had been sneaking into my shows since he was about 15 years old. So that was about 2011, 2012. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't aware that was going on, because um, he was just another smiling face in the crowd. No and um, people say over and over, he was like an old soul and very wise beyond his years. And, um, you know, it's clear even at 15, he was like definitely able to like carry himself and he was aware enough and mature enough to like not make himself super obvious. It also just kind of shows himself how he was able to carry. Uh, himself, but it's you know clear that he was very wise beyond his years. And he was born November 25th, 96, and um, this wise beyond his years came um, at a very early age. His dad recounted a time when they all went to the beach, and uh, they told Charles like, you know, don't stray, stray beyond the blanket. He was five years old at the time, and but soon, just a little bit later, he was seen a distance away. And he was playing with a bunch of like teenagers. They were playing volleyball. And by the time they went over to where he was playing, like they already knew Charles's name. And um, when the, the dad tried to take him, he, they were like, "No, we actually love talking to him. Like we love hanging out with him." They knew his name, uh, and they 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 really wanted him there. Um, he was very open. He was outgoing and trusting, even at that very early age. Uh, another amazing thing, he uh, one time got a call from Charles's elementary school because Charles had stood up for another child against a bully. But I finally started like kind of working with him around 2013, 2014. I would book him to open up for larger artists. Um, since he started so young, we'd have to sneak him in, hide him. Um, there was one time that, uh, I don't know if you know Sub Doctor, Preston Charles. He is also from Reno, Nevada. Um, he told me a story about how they were playing a, a venue up in Portland, Oregon, and the venue owner found out that Charles was underage. So they didn't have a green room, and they forced Charles to stand in a mop closet uh, in order to actually even be able to play the show. And he did it, because that was his passion to the music. And another show I had with him, he was opening for G. Jones and Sayer. And the head of security came up to me, it was at the Crystal Bay Casino, and he said, so I kicked out Charles after his set. And I was like, oh really, Like, why would you do that? He's like, because he graduated with my daughter, I know he's underage. But I played dumb, uh, as I regularly did, because we loved having him around. And uh, he wasn't your normal age, kind of, he wasn't your normal person, like he wasn't your kind of normal underage person. Uh, we loved hanging out with him, and as I said, he was wise beyond his years. I we never like, trusted him, he wouldn't cause trouble, cause any you know, major issues for us. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to like set it up for Huxley Ann here. She has something very special for you all. Thank you all. Let's give it up for Huxley and Hi, hi, hi. What's up, Denver? My name is Huxley Ann. I love Charles. 
I met him at admissions way back in the day. It was our first festival, his first festival, my first festival. Never knew what we were doing. The kid had such a rider's soul in him, and I felt very lucky to be able to experience and connect with that side of his heart. We would call each other Hawk and Howl more often than we called each other Gina and Charles. Um, when he was started rapping, like I remember he was so shy about it and so nervous, and we would be in these back-to-backs and I'd play his rap songs and he'd like be like, fuck you, what the hell, bitch, no! And then pick up the mic and start going. So, I want to share with you a project that was in the works um, when he passed that was called Outside Looking In. I've been becoming a director and a filmmaker in the past few years living in a remote cabin, writing poems. And Charles was a big part of that, who would like call me and listen to Marty Robbins and drink whiskey by a virtual fire. So, uh, Outside Looking In by Charles I is a song that we're gonna hear shortly. But I wanted to run you through the story he wanted to tell about his hometown for his first kind of produ produced music video. So this is the treatment for that. So we can go to the next slide, Ty. <laughs> Reno, Nevada takes place in Reno, of course. Like, where else would Charles want to film himself? Next one. Neon signs, like creepy motels. He loved this strip club called Men's Club. It was hot. Next slide. Exposed. We open on shots of Reno, Nevada. It's fall. Dutch angles of neon signs, time passing through filtered texture. Our intro creates movement in the way the light falls on juxtaposed images of urban and natural environments. As we drift from the glowing visions of the city, we land on our young buck. This was a baby Charles, like eight year old him in the video. The pure, the alive, his emotions contrasted with his youth. Young Buck is biking down a remote road in the area, heading to the strip club. We circle around his face, and he approaches the dim neon establishment. Next slide. Oh, Young, keep going. These are just reference images. We never got a sh chance to shoot this video, but it was green light and selected, and all creative. We'd had many sessions about how to tell this story about a kid biking around in Reno. Next slide. Yeah, a mountain shit. Yeah! Young hops off his bike, throwing it outside in the daylight. Twilight fades tonight, and we're pushing through the doorway behind the head of a child. He's familiar here for his age. By the way, Charles was so nervous about filming an eight-year-old kid in a strip club. As Young enters, we spin around his head again, same technique in the introductory shot. His eyes slowly widen from stimulation. We cut between emotional close-ups and party shots of the strip club. He smiles, greeting a couple of friends. Next slide, Tyler. Looks cute, keep going. Ooh, eight-year-old kid watching this. Keep going. Sexy. Young observes the chaos, magic, the wild west of Reno's late night scene. He begins to join in. We start flashing between Young and our hawk, the adult version of the child soul. Young shyly raps the first stanza. Thought I wasn't gonna wake up. We miss you, Charles! We miss you, Charles! Yes! We miss you every fucking day! We see Hawk rapping towards the camera for the first time as we zero in on him from Young's perspective, almost as if he's talking to his younger self, intimate and close. He's surrounded by friends, a party setting, the club going hard, the representation of the road, everything is heightened as we begin to fall into the darkness of Hulk, Hawk's adult mind. Next slide. This is not Charles. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Hawk rises from his seat at the strip club and walks to the club. 
towards the door in the back. He begins to glow autumnal and we see him walking towards nature as young as himself, magic camera movements. See a little brief woman named Lilac who's always watching him through doors. You know, Charles had many lovers. He shared his love with all of us, with me, with you. And every single fan who knew his sound, a boy radiated love. He approaches the drawer and storms clouds appear in our nature scenes. Ideally, it would be raining in Reno when we shoot. The wind enters the club, blowing hair, money, chips, drugs in the air as Hawk enters the door that opens up into his fate. It's chaos in the weight of a feather. Next slide. Woo! Hi, Lala. I don't know Keep going. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> Hawk falls back through the secret room after railing one last time on his journey through the club of chaos. We feel the high come on slow motion as the dust of blowing feathers and poker chips and powdered smoke clouds climaxes. And we're falling. He feels lost, alone, and vulnerable as we land above him. We watch as he slowly and painfully tries to rise, a visual metaphor for addiction. We see Lilac watching him using a telescope through the woods. He is always still loved. A hawk flies over the scene. Could you imagine Charles laying like this in the snow in the mountains? It would have been so cute. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. So I'm cut outside looking in. It's on the shirts tonight. On the very center. I hope you got one. Walking through the devastation. It references our inner selves, looking at the devastation of the road, a lifestyle that leads to relapse and death with a hopeful sense of compassion and empowerment. Young observes the aftermath. We feel him in a surreal windstorm. As in the beginning when we followed him in circles, panning around his face, we watch as innocent confusion spreads through his eyes. As Young processes what has happened, he begins to run away from the devastation. This video had three endings and I think we all know what happened. It's a shame and it's a huge blow to our community. The world would never be so lucky to have an artist like Charles alive when we were alive. Forever, I'll dedicate my work in film and my videos to embracing the truth and power he shared in his songs and his stories. I'm so excited to share with you the track, Outside Looking In.